Hi, my name is Beverly Stewart, and today I'm going to show you how to make this paper towel card. There are many steps, but it's not hard. You just have to follow each step um, one after the other. The image needs to have some detail, but you'll notice that the stems are wide enough to be able to be cut out. You don't want one lined stems that are too, too narrow to cut out. So we're going to stamp our image several times on the color of cardstock that we're going to be working on. About this technique is that it's all one color that lends to the special look of this technique. So stamp several images. You need three for these tulips. And you're going to need one more that we will put aside and use later on scratch paper. So there we go. Our stamping is done. But before we start cutting, we're going to need to understand what we're going to be cutting. We're going to have a base layer with less detailed cutting, and then we're going to have a middle layer that has more detailed cutting. And then for this top layer, I'm going to cut the tulips off and only have the leaves just to add texture to the finished product. And then if you'll notice on the finished product, the newspaper and the tie are what catches your eye. So they are going to be really focal points for um, doing some special techniques and we'll talk about those later. So now I begin cutting my base layer. Um, the newspaper is going to be added later, so we're going to cut that edge of the newspaper off. It doesn't have any stems in it. And then we'll be cutting on these tulips. We're cutting each stem separately. It doesn't make a lot of difference on the stamped side, but when you turn it over, you need to see the separate stems. And so each stem needs to be cut separately and different lengths to add that interest that grabs your attention. So I'll cut them different lengths now. There. Turn it over and that's how it looks. Remember we're going to be building layer upon layer and so um, it's the layers that add the reality to it. I just finished cutting out my first base layer and it's the cutting with, with the less detail. Now you have to ask yourself how does it look when it's inkless and so you, you may decide that something needs a little more clipping. Like these stems need to go longer. That wrapper is going to be around this part. So going down into the newspaper, you want to have more detail. And that stem needs to look narrower. You can turn that into a leaf maybe. Or cut it off. This one. Okay, this is um, the first base layer. With the less detailed cutting, this is the inked side. You turn it over, and now I've added some details with um, just by looking at what is visible. And um, we're ready to put that one aside and pick up the middle layer. Now, again, we're going to cut, and the flowers will be included on this layer. And so, more detailed cutting. We call it fussy cutting here on Split Coast. Okay, the difference in cutting on this middle layer is you're going to cut down the lines in the tulips this time, and you can just eliminate that little petal right there on each one of these. Um, this is going to make the petals uh, spring to life when we do the paper towel on it. So go ahead and cut. Don't all don't cut all the way to the bottom. Maybe three fourths of the way to the bottom. And again, it's time to turn it over. And look at the details that you've added on the back. Where could you, maybe I'll help you see if I put it on the black. Um, where could you add more details? And of course we need to cut up on the stems into that area that's going to be behind the newspaper. And then cut down from here. And so that's what I'm going to do. Just to give it that extra dimension. I think there's one more. There. And then we're going to do the same thing at the top, but a little more carefully because it's easy to cut a flower off that you didn't mean to cut off if you're not watching where your scissors are going. This is going to really be um, the defining layer when you get ready to put it all together. And there we go. 
Now, okay, put them side by side. Can you see the difference in the layers? This one has more detail. This one's going to be your base and your support. And now this one is going to be easier because we're going to cut all the tulips off of this one and we're going to only be left with leaves. That one, see the leaf? We're going to cut right through that tulip. I'm sorry, tulip. But it may be easier if you just go ahead and chop those heads off so you're not feeling sorry for those little flowers while you're doing this. And it'll help you be able to see the blades of the leaves better. So bye-bye tulips. And now we're going to get those blades and give them as much definition as possible on this layer because this is going to be the top. Now that's a stem right there so we can cut it out because it doesn't have a tulip attached to it anymore. And that also is a stem. And you may have to look on the back to be, see what you're doing on some of this. Leaf. Stem. Now you can see where some of the tulips were but um, we don't have to worry about that anymore because the tulips are gone. We're just getting some shape into these leaves. And if you cut one off accidentally, um, don't worry about that because nobody knew it was there to start with. You can either paste it back in when you assemble the bouquet, if you think it's missing, or you can just forget about it and put it in a little trash pile. Turn it over, give it a little more definition, cut off any jagged edges, round the corners. Cutting is complete, and you can see that when we stack them on top of each other, it really already, without even the um, paper toll yet, gives it a lot of dimension just having those three layers. We're going to add some dimension with the stylus. So we're going to bring all of these over here. and. Um, Take your bone folder and curl this kind of like you would curling ribbon. Uh, the way it's different from curling ribbon is you don't want all those stems to be curled exactly the same way. So you kind of worry them with your fingers until they're separated. And then you're going to do the same thing with the top, only much more gently because these stems are a little fragile at this point. Just so it's not laying so flat anymore. And same thing here, only this one we want to have the most curl. But for the flowers, you want to take a stylus, and this is just a stylus from my scoring tool, and I'm going to use the bigger end and work on the base layer first because it doesn't show as much, so you learn how to do it here. Um, lay it down on your foam pad and do a little circular motion this way. And here, and breaking down the fibers in that paper so that it begins to curl. If you don't have a stylus, you can find uh, something else that's got a rounded tip. The end of your bone folder would sort of work for this. Or something else you have in the household. A click type ballpoint with the um, pen um, retracted would be a clumsier tool but it would probably work there and then we work on it this direction so that the cupped edge goes toward the bottom so we're working on the inked side and again doing the same thing to this layer and then turn it over and if you stack it on top of the other one, you can really start to see the dimension now. And this one doesn't need any of the stylus work. So we just lay that on top. We're going to set these aside and we're going to begin working on our faux suede. I don't know if you've ever made this before, um, but what you have to do to make faux suede is take a scrap and you'll notice our newspaper. This is that scrap that we stamped on earlier. Newspaper is not this wide, and so we want it to be wide enough to wrap around our bouquet. So this is about the size we need, and we're going to just work to break down those um, fibers completely. And you can use your bone folder. You can use a crimper. I think you could even use um, an embossing folder 
with a lot of pattern in it and just keep turning your paper different directions in that embossing folder to do this. Um, I like to use a bone folder to start with and then after that curl is in there and the fibers have begun to be broken down, I just use my hands. And we've got to go this direction too, I forgot. And then I just start working it this way. And you can check to see if it's done. You're going to start seeing it split. You see like that right there? That's meaning you're about finished. And you can grab the corner and pull it apart. And there, you have two pieces of faux suede. And you can do a lot of things with this. Um, add texture to a lot of projects. I've made bears before. Um, sleeping bags. Lots of different things you can do with that. So now we're ready to see how big this needs to be. And you're going to kind of eyeball that. See this piece right here? We're going to double that. So we want to take this line out, same amount that this is. So we're basically unfolding it. And then do the same thing at the bottom. So unfold it and bring it out about that far. Doesn't matter how it looks on this paper, this is just going to be our pattern. And then you're going to connect those two dots and, and the image is a little rounded on the edges. So draw that part of the pattern and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. Double this and so it be about that far. Um, and same thing up here. Project that out and then connect those dots. And then this needs to be one seamless piece so you kind of connect those two lines right there and then you've made a pattern and then cut a piece of your faux suede and the reason you do faux suede here is because we're, remember we're using inkless images so you can't really represent a newspaper here so you want to kind of rep represent a soft wrapping on the flower like maybe tissue paper or something like that and um, when you have inkless images and everything's the same color, you, the, your texture becomes so important um, to convey the different layers. So here's our newspaper wrapper. We'll bring our bouquet back and we'll try it on for size. Make sure we got it big enough. And, and there we go. We've got a wrapper ready. And we've got our bouquet ready. Now we need our little string. And to do that, if you cut on a short grain of the paper, it's going to tear easily. So you've got to figure out which way is the long grain. And then just cut uh, about sixteenth of an inch all the way down. And yes, this will still tear easily, even though I did cut um, with the grain. Um, but it's long enough to tie, and that's what we need. Now we're ready to assemble the whole bouquet. So, so unfold and take everything apart, your different pieces, and I'm going to use sticky dots to assemble. First we'll assemble the bouquet, and so it doesn't take much um, to hold it in place, just like two sticky dots, and you're going to put them on top of each other, line them up, and then line this top layer up, same way. there and then we need some dots on the back to put it on the faux suede remember to have the faux suede facing outward you don't want the suede part on the inside where it's not going to show so the soft pretty side on the outside this would make a good baby's blanket too you have to keep that in mind when you're thinking about uses for faux suede looks like flannel and then one more. Suede doesn't like to stick to any adhesives and so if you have trouble you may want to move on to glue instead of the sticky dots but I stuck it to the non-suede part so I think it's going to stay. And then we're going to tie this part around. Don't pull too tight or it'll tear. There, it doesn't have to hold it. It just has to look like it's tied in a knot. 
and I'm going to put three dimensionals. This is the side we're not going to see. I'm going to put some dimensionals here on the back where they won't show. And then I've got a card base. And notice on this part, because we're working all in one color, I have big texture. And then this is textured cardstock, but there's not much texture to it. And then a different texture. In fact, I think I want to turn that over so we'll have some variety. And then I would mount it with my dimensionals here and cut the string where I think it needs to be cut. And we have our finished product. Thank you for watching.